I recently recorded two videos about the V3 supercharger with Magic Dock. This is CCS EV charging capability that was activated at the end of February in only 10 US locations, eight in New York, two in California. And it just so happens one is pretty close to my home here in Connecticut. It's in Brewster, New York, right across the border from Danbury. And it has eight stalls. What's unique and special about it is this Magic Dock allows non-Teslas to charge. So those two videos on March 2nd and March 4th, get right into it. A couple things I didn't really emphasize in those videos, and I gave it a little more thought afterward, is the significance of Tesla removing the bollards. Probably March 3rd, or between March 2nd and March 4th, that's all I know, is the bollards, which are also signs with a QR code to say, hey, non-Tesla uh, owners, aim your phone at this QR code to download the Tesla app to get started with activating and charging. Why is that significant? Well, it does mean that Tesla is experimenting, right? This is a, a test site. You could call it beta V3 supercharging, if you will, for CCS non-Tesla cars. That's a good sign, but you could predict that those short cables were going to be a problem, and sure enough, they were. Now, with a Ford F-150 Lightning in particular, it was interesting to see that Tom Malagny, a prominent YouTuber with even more prominent MKBHD, Marquez Brownlee, um, as Tom likes to call Marquis. Anyhow, you got to watch that video. It's good stuff. Uh, but anyhow, at that supercharger, he had to park really close to the bollard, like one inch away, just to have the DC fast charging cable barely reach his F-150 Lightning. My point is, somebody's watching that video and somebody decided, let's remove the bollard. Now, if they're going to relocate those bollards, put them somewhere else, because they weren't actually protecting the supercharger stall or cabinet, whatever you want to call it. They were actually well, you'll see. Uh, take a look at the video in the picture. So this video is meant to be an introduction by two videos, March 2nd and March 4th, about the supercharger location. I recommend you watch them because they have a lot more detail than here. So this is significant because it's the very beginning of the U.S. rollout, right? This country is having its very first peak at what Europe's been doing for about a year, and that is allowing any brand of EV to go to the massive supercharger network. Why this is significant is, is Electrify America and EVgo have not been doing a wonderful job keeping uh, America electrified this past winter. Uh, Kyle Connor, Dave Connor, his dad, uh, Kilowatts, and finally Brandon Flash, they've all been out there in a very publicly uh, spectacular fashion calling out those companies on the challenges with supercharging. For me, I volunteer with EV Club of Connecticut and have this blog, tinkertry.com, for almost a dozen years where I, I write tech articles. And for me, the interest is the technical side, not the political stuff. I want to see how all those brands of cars do, but there's also kind of the social aspect of what is the etiquette? When a car is parked in the wrong spot, they're essentially blocking a Tesla from charging. Um, okay. You'll, you got to watch the video for details on that, but basically it's because charge ports are not in a standard location. It also is good to see, um, well, huge engagement, comments, uh, tweets, engagement from um, Ford. It, it seems companies are actually watching this stuff. Owen Sparks called out that he found it reassuring that it, it seems like Tesla might be taking the feedback from these sites. But looking ahead, I like to look ahead. Imagine a year or two from now, hopefully Tesla wisely uses these infrastructure dollars they're now eligible for by opening up a portion of the network. I think it's about a quarter to a third of the US network, supercharger locations. Hopefully they don't just retrofit and add Magic Dock to the V3s. I hope they go with the new V4 superchargers. Have a look. There's video starting to surface from Europe on what those look like. They're much taller, longer cable. In the U.S., they will need a magic dock fitted to them because in Europe, you don't. You just one cable fits all cars, including Tesla's. Not true in the U.S. So imagine a V4 supercharger with plenty of cable length. And here's the kicker. 1,000 volts capability. That means something like a Hyundai Ioniq, um, Porsche Taycan. Other vehicles coming out from here forward will tend to have higher voltages, even the Tesla Cybertruck. Wouldn't it be interesting if, for example, the Tesla Cybertruck charges way faster than its competitors before, like the Ford F-50 Lightning and the Rivian R1T and R1S? All right. Finally, disclosure. I don't own stock in any of these electric car companies or any car companies or any tech companies. So just throwing that out there that I voluntarily drove over to Brewster, New York to document what was going on on the full first or sorry, second full day of operation and fourth full day of operation in that Brewster, New York location. Hopefully you enjoy those. And if you do, please consider the thumbs up. Even better if you subscribe or um, comments too. Um, those are always appreciated. And I'm trying to answer them. It's difficult, but I actually enjoy supercharging technology. I was the first uh, person in Connecticut to fully document the V3 superchargers that first went up in Connecticut. Uh, Meriden, Fairfield, Greenwich, those areas were all being constructed at once. 
That's over three years ago. They were first ones northeast of Tennessee. So kind of a big deal right here in Connecticut. I happen to live near history being made for all brand of EVs. And they've had a decade of supercharging experience. They can make those cabinets in Buffalo, New York, far cheaper than competitors. That makes them an interesting option to be a viable competitor at similar electric rates, uh, similar charging cost rates of what Electric America is charging. So for me, that gives me more hope for the future of being able to buy whatever brand of electric vehicle you want so you can safely you know, drive that uh, long distance family road trip, maybe Thanksgiving, New Year's, July 4th, without worrying about it. That is the dream. Hopefully that dream comes true in two years. You can look back at this video. I would love for my prediction here to be true. And of course, competitors to Tesla like Rivian or maybe Ford and GM will decide to step up and build their own charging networks. This country sorely needs reliable charging. We need supercharging to work for everybody and for it to show on the on-screen now so those cars precondition their batteries, warm them up on the way to the uh, Tesla supercharger that's charging non-Teslas. That's also extremely critical, especially here in the winter where it gets a bit chillier and it can dramatically slow down your charging time. So thank you so much for watching and I'll say goodbye for now.